Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Arisa Awati binti Razman and I will be presenting on the history of the national language. Firstly, I will explain the origin and concept of Malay language. To begin with, Malaysia is a nation made up of many different ethnic groups and the largest ethnic group, which is the Malays, speak Malay as their mother tongue. During the British colonization period, the government didn't pay much attention to the language. However, the establishment of an inspector of schools and an assistant director in charge of Malay vernacular education in the Straits settlements and the Federated Malay States marked a significant turning point in Malay education. Wilkinson, who is an expert on Malay culture and language, changed the textbooks and updated the curriculum in schools and colleges. Furthermore, Malaysia's independence from Britain had led to the establishment of the Malay language as an official language. Based on the Razak report, the political party during that period, UMNO, recommended that Malay be adopted as the nation's official language. All the elementary and secondary schools would use Malay as their major instructional medium. Malaysia's first constitution of 1957 declared Malay to be the country's official language and in 1967, Malay was renamed Bahasa Malaysia. For the purpose of encouraging and developing Bahasa Malaysia, the National Language Campaign and Dewan Bahasa dan Pustaka had played their roles and taken measures in fulfilling the mission. Next, I will briefly explain about the politics of language in Malaya. In 1957, Malaysia's constitution declared that the national language should be the Malay language and the National Language Act, established by the Malaysian Parliament, aims to establish rules primarily for the use of Malay for official purposes. However, there were demands from the plural community that Tamil, Chinese and English all should be given the same official status. One of the approaches taken to solve this issue is through the Razak Report, when one of the measures taken is by creating a uniform curriculum for all schools and making Malay and English required subjects in primary and secondary schools. In 1967, the language problem did not frequently come to the fore politically. On February 24, the Tengku introduced the National Language Bill into the House and among the discussions were about the use of the National Language for official purposes. Nothing in this Act shall affect the federal government's or any state government's ability to use translations of official documents or communications in the language of any other community in the Federation and the Yandi Perton Agong may continue to utilize the English language for any official reasons that may be judged appropriate. Another approach in solving the language issues had been carried out by AMNO, where they had consented to admitting non-Malays as citizens on the understanding that Malay would be accepted unconditionally as the country's sole official language. So, that's all for me and I will pass to the next presenter. Assalamualaikum, my name is Cik Nur Wahida Amalin binti Cik Hamdan and now I will be presenting on the implementation of national language since Merdeka until today. The first point is National Language Act 1963-67. The implementation of the Malay language as the national language did not start immediately after the independence of Malaysia and before Malay language became the national language, English had been used as the main language in most mediums such as administration and in this education system for almost 10 years after the independence in 1957. Not long after that, the National Language Act had come into force gradually in 1963. This had resulted in the usage of the Malay language to be inserted slowly in daily affairs, especially in official purpose. And moreover, language is one of the main tools of communication. Thus, by using national language in our daily communication, people can be connected in, until the national level. When the National Language Act had come into force, the Malay language had started to become the national and sole language in most mediums such as implementing the national implementing the language in the education system after the passing of Malay Education Policy of 1961 and the National Language Act of 1963-7. Besides, this act had permitted the usage of any translation to any official statement to facilitate races other than Malay. The Malay language is being fully used in national schools of Malaysia since it became the vernacular language of Malaysia which came first before English. 
The consequence of this act has made Malay language being pursued until tertiary education together with the English language. The public universities in Malaysia are required to use the Malay language as the main language medium in their education system such, uh, such, um, as, such as um, one of the requirements of becoming a public university. In addition, the National Language Act is also being enforced for the use of language in the parliament, although the usage of the national language in the parliament is not rigid and the members of the parliament are also permitted to use English or any other language apart from Malay language. This issue was raised in the parliament when the former minister of the Prime Minister's Department, Datuk Sri Azalina Osman Said, said, the issue of the using the national language in parliament is subjected to the National Language Act and Standing Order of the Rakyat, where it is not compulsory for the parliament members to use the national language alone when debating in the parliament. Thus, the application of National Language Act as the language mediums is still important in promoting the Malay language as the national language to the higher level such as the implementation in the education system as one of the alternatives to cultivate the Malaysian to recognize and be able to communicate in Malay language from an early age. Besides, the members of the parliament shall be the first to apply the Malay language as the language medium in debating and discussing the matters regarding our country so that they can be the example to the people in our country. Besides the existence of National Language Act, there is also the Education Review Committee 1960, which is a cabinet committee that had been built in the post-independence by Abdul Rahman Talib, who was the Minister of Education in 1960. The purpose of this committee is to examine the education system with the objective to make the education system in Malaysia into a national level such as providing them with public expenses, satisfy the needs of the people and the Malay language will be the main language in the education system in order to build school to be provided with government support and being granted with national schools privilege. The implementation of Malay language in the education system from the primary, secondary and tertiary level is to make the Malay language to be a national language and to be in the higher level besides promoting the culture, political and economical advancement of the country. As quoted from the Abdul Rahman Talib Report 1960, which is all primary schools using the mother tongue language be abolished and replaced with national and national type schools for the purpose of national unity. One uh, from this quote, one of the requirements from the school to be aided with the government facilities is implementing the Malay language in the teaching method and teaching the mother mother tongue language from the early stage, for example, in the primary school. In addition, in 175 paragraph of the Abdul Rahman Talib Report 1960, it also highlighted that implementing the country's official language in the public examination for secondary level is one of the essential requirements in the state policy. English is still considered as the language medium in schools. However, the Malay language still comes into the priority because it is the national language and to cultivate the student to be able to understand and speak Malay fluently as for the preparation to seek the examination which, which will be held in this language. Hence, the cabinet members had started their efforts in the early days to implement the national language in the education system without putting aside English as one of the language mediums. And the present and the future generation shall carry on with the implementation of the Malay language to appreciate their efforts in putting up the Malay language as the, as the official language in our education system. My name is Nur Ain Bashira Binti Samsam and now I will explain on the implementation since Merdeka Day until today. 
So first, for Malay Language Education Roadmap 2016 until 2025. So the Malay Language Education Roadmap 2016 until 2025, Ministry Malaysian Education has been designed based on the result of the Language Laboratory Malay Year 2016 to improve acquisition and competence of the Malay language that is targeted from preschool to higher uh, education institutions. Moreover, Malay Language Education Roadmap 2016 until 2025, Ministry Education Malaysia has set the necessary strategies and actions plans implemented implemented according to their established timeline effectively. So the guidelines provide specific information on implementation of a high impact program to identify the Malay language in supporting the main success areas of the Ministry of Education Malaysia. So for the first part uh, of the wave which is the start of the roadmap in 2016 is to make a review about Malay language education. So in the first part of the wave, there are a few things that had listed down for the strong implementation of Malay language to the people. So which are establishing a board educational reconne recognition Malay language for public, establishing the center of excellence Malay language education for the teacher, uh, and conducting mastery Malay tests to the public university and teacher education institute and setting the terms of honor Malay literature communicative Malaysian certificate of education for the Malay language course at a public university for the student. Okay. For the second part of the wave, which is around 2020, the main objective is to strengthen Malay language education. Hence, the implementation that had been enumerated for the second part of the wave is strengthening oral mastery, conducting assessment, oral achievement test, primary school, and certificate Malaysian lessons, offering subjects Malay literature communicative, and implementing the program interactive Malay language skills for the student. Lastly, for the third part of the wave, the main achievement is the research and innovation as well as external relations. Thus, the implementation to attract the external relations are appointing referral officer Malay in the department government or for the public, placing Mushi Hall at the district education office for the teacher, cultivating research, translation and publishing the Malay language. Honoring the Malay language outside of the education and conducting test Malay language test achievement to new employees for the public. So for all the third wave that I have mentioned, this plan allows parties involved in education in the Malay language to make effective decisions about the curriculum, teaching and learning, assessment and teacher training, as well as the implementation of programs or activities to increase the use and mastery of the Malay language. So this roadmap is a reference to educators in particular and the public general to implement and support the action plan to dignify the Malay language. Alright, moving on to the language and nationalism. So Malaysia, upon independence from colonial rule in 1957, adopted a policy of promoting the Malay language as the sole national and official language of Malaysia to create a common Malaysian identity for its diverse multi-ethnic and multilingual populace. So at the time of independence, given the disparate political, economy and social reality, the Malay language was it, was chosen to help forge a Malaysian identity and encourage national unity. So given Malaysian history and social reality where migrants were introduced to the country by the British, language in Malaysia is a highly political and sensitive issue and a change in a language policy can only be initiated by the government. So the Malay language was instituted through the Malaysian constitution as the national language of the country to unify its multi-ethnic society. Our first Prime Minister of Malaysia, Tunku Abdul Rahman, highlighted the importance and functions of the national language through his statement, which is, it is only right that as a developing nation, we should want to have a language of our own. So if the national language is not introduced, our country 
uh, will be devoid of a unified character and personality as I could put it, a nation without a soul and without a life. So the Malay language in Tunku's world is the soul of the nation and characterized the Malaysian identity. So the Malay language became the sole official language of Malaysia in 1967 through the National Language Act. The National Language Act 1967 introduced the current Malaysian dual education system, whereby national school use Malay as the medium of instruction and national type school use Chinese and Tamil as the medium of instruction and Malay is taught uh, as a subject only. So a common syllabus uh, endorsed by the Ministry of Education is used for all national and national type schools. So mother tongue education is safeguarded by Article 152 of the Federal Constitution of Malaysia. However, these vernacular language have no official and administrative status and functions in the country. So the Malay language through its role as the medium of instruction has evolved as a medium to create an encompassing uh, national identity and developing nationalism. So since independence, the government has actively used the national language policy through its various effort, uh, efforts to unite Malaysian of different ethnicities and create a Malaysian identity. So the need for national integration has always been crucial to Malaysia given the political reality of having a society that is pluralistic in most aspects. So the social and political reality in Malaysia is defined in terms of racial poly polarizations where the three major ethnic groups which are Malay, Chinese and Indians primarily, primarily identify with ethnic identity first before national identity. The implementations and effort to empower Malay language by the government and citizens have indeed contributed to where the national language is standing today. However, it is undeniable that there are still major challenges that Malaysia have to face, especially in this modern era. Unlike before, there are new obstacles that come along with the rapid change in technologies, norms and cultures. Thus, the challenges are in respect of the competition with English, widespread of technology and negative perceptions toward national language. So the first one is competition with English. When it comes to languages, societies acknowledge that English is an utmost global language and being used widely in the world because of its huge influences in early history. This circumstance had placed other languages at stake including Malay. The competition can be seen in education in Malaysia, particularly at tertiary level. Since the highest percent of population in the country are peers and students, it is important to start empowering Malay among the youngsters. However, the enforcement of Section 17, Subsection 1 of the Education Act 1966 by the government had created a, a barrier to the first step. This act allowed the exclusion of Malay as the medium of instruction in education. Passing of this law has opened more room for universities to practice English among their students and this condition will encourage more citizens to ignore their mother tongue pride. Besides, the entry requirements also emphasize on passing in English that is at least band 3 in Malaysian University English Test MWET and band 5 for science and technology courses. In fact, only a few local universities are wholly using Malay and one of them is University National of Malaysia, UKM. Another concern is in respect of sources of reading and learning materials. The, is the issue is like of references and textbooks written in the local language where the original works or translations. According to the report conducted by researchers, in 2014, based on the Cluster of National Council of Professors, MPN, 86% of the publishing of books, articles and monographs were in English, whereas the rest were in Malay. The process of acquiring knowledge can be done in any language and in fact, delivery of the knowledge should be in the language that is most easily understood by the citizen. The second one is development in information technology. 
So many will agree that the most dominant language in technology is English, and it indirectly affects the local language as well. The Information and Communication Technology ICT, era has shown the spread of the use of English and subsequently followed by software and computer hardware manufacturers, which were all founded by those who speak English. Although the advancement and influence of technology are spreading widely in Malaysia, the citizens must ensure that the Malay needs to keep pace with this development. These environmental changes raise the question of whether Malay is relevant to be used in the ICT as an alternative as most of the users commonly use English as the main instructors. Besides, another question arises as to how far the societies can gain benefits from these technologies, but at the same time, the local language is not to be put aside. Looking at the nature of this new development, the goods will bring along some disadvantages as the chances of influence from the use of English is high. The third one is negative perceptions towards local language. So one of the challenges may come from the weakness of the societies that practice the language as well. It cannot be denied that people in our country are proficient in these two languages and there are various forms and ways in their speech. Nevertheless, some Malay communities believe that English is the language of global knowledge and consider the local language as old fashioned or not suitable to be used in today's generation. So the issue is when the speakers tend to mix the language in their opinion or conversation or writing. So the value of Malay can be damaged since confusion is the use of language that does not follow the rules either in terms of syntax, vocabulary or terms which result in chaos and inconsistency in the formation of sentence, clauses, phrases, spelling and pronunciation. So besides, there are parents who teach their children English but Malay in order to fit in the generation. Unfortunately, these children have difficulties to speak in his or her own country's language despite the nationality. This situation may not contribute at large, but if it were to be normalized, it will give a big drawback to the status of Malay. In conclusion, the role of Malay language as, a sole, as the sole national language has always been crucial in promoting and fostering a sense of national identity and nationalism among Malaysians. Language is taken to be an important marker of ethnicity. The past incidents in the history of Malaysia have shown that attempts to introduce changes in education and language policies have resulted in racial conflict and tensions. Even in the present times, uh, tension mount when education policies regarding language are introduced. However, currently English and other vernacular languages are no longer viewed as absolute threats to the Malay language. The role and position of Malay language is solidified in Malaysia. Moreover, language policies in Malaysia will continue to uphold the Malay language as the sole national language of Malaysia. Um, but um, English will come to play a bigger role given the country's impetus to global trade and internationalization. Malaysia in recent years has been adopting pragmatic and progressive language education policies um, involving Malay, English and other vernacular languages such as Mandarin in order to become a developed nation. English and vernacular languages will continue to exist alongside the Malay language. However, Malaysia's history and struggles of finding equilibrium amongst its various languages and peoples should never be forgotten. The Malay language as a national language has come to play an important role in the lives of all Malaysians. However, all other languages that coexist in Malaysia have their own roles and function in Malaysian, Malaysian society and none threaten the role played by the national language. The national language is a strong identity maker, marker of each citizen of vary, varying races and a source that unites each citizen. That's all from us. Thank you for watching. Assalamualaikum.